On this episode of China Uncensored, the real reason Hong Kong never had full democracy. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Now, as many of you know, I pride myself on being a biased Westerner who knows nothing about China. Unfortunately, I find myself constantly being subjected to reasonable, well-thought-out arguments by supporters of the Chinese Communist Party. And in no topic have I been as stymied as I have been with the democracy protests in Hong Kong. Did Hong Kong have democracy during the 150 years it was a British colony? No. No, of course it didn't. Well, not until the early 1990s anyway, when the last British governor, Chris Patton, pushed for elections in Hong Kong that allowed Hong Kong citizens to elect half of their legislative council. The point is, my own hypocrisy has been thrust in my face. How can anyone complain that the Communist Party hasn't given Hong Kong democracy when they never had it in the first place? Ish. In fact, while we're on the topic of reasonable, well-thought-out arguments, state-run People's Daily lays it out clear when it said this. According to the People's Daily, it was the Chinese Communist Party who pushed for real democracy in Hong Kong. They even invite us to compare the Chinese government with the British government and make up our own minds. And who says the People's Daily is propaganda? Surely those arguments are indisputable. Yes, the democracy the People's Daily is talking about involves Hong Kong residents getting to choose between candidates Beijing selected. But isn't that still more democracy than the British Empire ever gave them? Well, that might be true, but only because the Communist Party threatened to invade Hong Kong if they ever did. You see, in the 1950s, the British colonial government actually wanted to implement democratic elections in Hong Kong, but the party made it very clear that would not be tolerated. According to recently declassified British diplomatic dispatches, China has had a long history of squashing democracy in Hong Kong. In 1958, then-Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai responded to the idea that Hong Kong could become self-governing by calling it a plot or a conspiracy that would be regarded as an unfriendly act. Dun dun dun! And then, in 1960, a senior Chinese official in charge of Hong Kong affairs said if the British force the people of Hong Kong into voting for their own leaders, we shall not hesitate to take positive action to have Hong Kong, Kowloon, and new territories liberated, courtesy of the People's Liberation Army. Turns out the Communist Party never wanted democracy for Hong Kong. Did the People's Daily just publish a bald-faced lie? I'm shocked, shocked. So if they were ready to invade, how come they never did? How come the Chinese regime preferred a British-run Hong Kong? Well, according to these documents, it's because they wanted the Brits to keep the economy going so the party could trade and contact people of other countries and obtain materials. It was pretty clear that the communist economic policies of the times were, well, there's a reason they call the years between 1959 and 61 the Great Famine. They wanted Hong Kong's economy as strong as possible, not in a state of ruin. And what happened when the two countries were negotiating the return of Hong Kong to China in the 1980s? Well, Chinese officials continued to threaten the UK to make sure it maintained Hong Kong's status quo. And when Patton tried to introduce democratic elections in the 1990s, Chinese officials called him a serpent and a prostitute for a thousand years. There's an old Chinese saying, the mountains are high and the emperor is far away. A democratic, economically independent Hong Kong could give ideas to its neighbors in the mainland, like Shenzhen. That's where your Apple computers are made. Not only is it an economic powerhouse in its own right, the whole Guangdong province is already linked by the same language as Hong Kong. And it's pretty far from Beijing. If the party ever started to lose its grip on China, it would probably be here first. So let's recap. The People's Daily asked us to compare two governments. Let's see. On the one hand, British officials repeatedly tried to introduce democracy and self-rule to Hong Kong. On the other hand, Chinese officials repeatedly threatened to invade Hong Kong if that happened. Which one offered real democracy? Tough choice. 
Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. What do you think about the revelation that Beijing was secretly blocking democracy in Hong Kong? Leave your comments below, share the video, and subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.